Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to part 11 of the OpenSCAD video series. In this part, we're going to be talking about animation, the sine function, and oscillating motion. So let's get started. So to animate things in OpenSCAD, there, are, there is a special variable that you can use to make things move. And that is dollar sign $t. And what this basically does, uh, dollar sign $t, is it goes from 0 to 1 in different increments. So basically to do animation, let me just show you, you have to go to view and click animate. So if we come down here, we now see a little little bar down here uh, that has time, frames per second, and steps. So generally a good frames per second is uh, your refresh rate, which is probably 60 or 120 hertz. So 60 is usually a good number. And steps is, it can change depending on what you need it to be. The more steps you have, the slower your, um, your animation is. So now we can see that there's this, uh, there's this counter in the bottom left. And every once in a while, when you see it gets up to nine, it resets and goes back to zero. And then it travels up to nine and it will do a bunch of values in between zero and one. Uh, it should be a hundred values between zero and one. And if I do a thousand, it'll do a thousand values. If I do 10,000, it'll do 10,000 values in between zero and one. So that's what the time is. And the value that's indicated here in time can is in the, uh, the editor as dollar sign T. So say we want to have a cube or an object and we want to move it around. Um, then what we can do, uh, say we have our cube. Have our cube in the middle here, and we want to just move it out. We want to see it move. So a translation would be a good place to start. So let's just translate it in the x direction, which is this this axis right here. So it should move this way because uh, it's increasing. So let's watch this happen. Um, we'll go one hundred. And it doesn't look like a lot's happening. You can kind of see it resetting and moving very slowly. And that's because the whole cube is actually only moving one unit over. Uh, by the end of the animation, the whole cube is only moving one unit over. So uh, if we want it to go further, say we want it to move 20 units. By the end of the animation, we want our cube to have moved 20 units in the positive x direction. So what we'll do, since we know this goes from zero to one, at zero it will be zero, and when dollar sign t is one, uh, it will be whatever value we multiply it by. So we can multiply by 20, and at the end of the animation, the cube will have moved 20 units. So let's zoom out a bit, and we'll say 100 steps. And as we can see, uh, the cube is moving, which is not, maybe not super exciting, but, um, I, I think it's, it's pretty cool. It's the beginnings. Um, so another thing that you can do with this, because maybe just going out in a line isn't super interesting, you can, um, you can rotate it and these give some interesting animations. So we'll take this, uh, we'll get rid of that. Well, maybe let's say it's already tw translated out 20 units. So now the center of the cube is at 20 units, is 20 units away from the origin. And we wanna rotate around the Z axis. So we'll make this go in a circle. So the way we do that, so we know the animation goes from zero to one, and we know a complete circle is 360 degrees in OpenSCAD because we use degrees. So we say 360 
times dollar sign t. So it'll by the time it gets to 1, it will have rotated 360 degrees. So let's look at that. What does that look like? And we can see we have um, a rotating cube. And um, again, it's just, just the basics of animation. It's interesting. We can do a few more interesting things. We can copy this a few times. And just change the axis that it's rotating around. So let's see what that looks like. I think that's much more interesting. Another thing you can do is assign a value for dollar sign $t. Let's say 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0.5. One, two, three, and that can give you different values. I think. Can we? We can render that too. Um, so you just put in a specific value for dollar nineteen, and wh wherever you think it, it's best. Maybe you like it um, when they're all joined together. So maybe somewhere point five, and that can be rendered, uh, previewed, and rendered because you can get a bunch of interesting shapes depending on where you are they often happen to line up in interesting places so that's that's more or less the basics of animation you can apply this this dollar sign t to most functions um, but we're gonna move on to something else we're gonna move on to the sine function so uh, you may or may not know depending on your level of mathematical experience what the sine function is but essentially it is a function that moves between um, one and negative one and it oscillates similar to a spring or other things that oscillate so the way that we describe the sine function in OpenSCAD is just sin and parentheses so we can add that inside of functions. I'm going to create a for loop. So as I was saying, you can translate. Um, to show the properties of the sine function. So it doesn't look like much, but you can kind of see that it oscillates. So what we can do, we can multiply the sine function to give us a bit of a better example. So we'll multiply it by 10 so it looks a little more prominent. And so you can see here, uh, maybe I'll make it a bit bigger too, what the sine function is doing. It um. It kind of is wavy and every time it reaches 360 it comes back to where it was so it starts off at zero actually we might be looking at this the wrong way around uh, there we go so it starts off at zero and then it goes to positive one around here around 90 degrees, it comes back to zero uh, around here at 180 degrees and down to negative one at 270 degrees and back up to zero at 360 degrees. So we're going to use this property in animation, but this is just um, an, ex an example of what the sine function does and what it is. So, um, 
can't think of another good example of it right now, but um, I'm going to show its uses in animation. So say we want uh, our translated cube example we did in the beginning. Say we want it to come back or oscillate. So what we would do, we have to have um, dollar sign T in here somewhere, but where that is, is going to be a question. So we probably want to put it somewhere inside the sign function. But since it only goes from zero to one, the sign function isn't going to do much. It's, it's just going to increase a little bit because we know that to get the whole way there, the, uh, the sign function has to get to 360. So if it was just to go to one, it would just move a little bit like here. So that's not super helpful to us. So we want to multiply dollar sign T by 360. So by the end of the animation, um, whatever we were doing has come full circle and, uh, and started again. So it'll create a looped animation more or less. It should, in a lot of cases it does. So, um, let's demonstrate this. And we can see our cube is moving back and forth just as we wanted it to. So if we want it to move a little bit further, we, remember the sine function only goes from negative one to one. So we want it to be a bit bigger. Maybe we want it to go from negative 10 to 10 and we multiply by 10. And we can also use uh, the cosine function as something a little bit similar. See, we can see it's moving um, along the xy plane now. But let's use the cosine function, which is similar to the sine function, except it starts at one, and we get uh, essentially circular movement. So something that's different than just rotating this is um, it keeps its orientation. So the cube will just stay however it was before it was, ro it was rotated or translated. So the cube doesn't undergo any rotation, its position does. Um, so another interesting example that we're going to do is to really demonstrate the point of oscillation. We're going to look back at this example. Let's give it a bit more, let's say 30. So we're going to add another sine function in here. We're going to multiply by sine of something else again, but this time it's going to be the sine of 360 times dollar sign T, so times the time value. And this should give us a kind of really interesting wavy, wavy motion. So it does, let's see it a little bit faster. kind of like a worm. And sometimes it has to load depending on uh, how complicated or how many objects you have in your, um, in your animation. You might be able to hear my computer 
really working hard to process it because there are a lot of elements. I could probably uh, make it a bit easier if I said maybe every five. Yeah, that's much more easy to process. And this is, these are the basics of animation. Uh, dollar sign T is the value for time, and with the sine function, um, 360 times dollar sign T is, I'd say it's pretty standard. Uh, that way it will come back to whatever you need it to be. Um, it's give you circular or oscillating motion. That's probably, that's a really good way to do it. Anyway, I think that's everything. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.